The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. During the weeks of this short span of ordinary time, St. Mark's Gospel has been presenting us with miracle stories that took place at the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. Today, the last Sunday of this liturgical season, we are once again hearing about a miracle that Jesus performed before many. The Gospel begins with a leper kneeling before Jesus and begging to be made clean. Leprosy in the ancient world was any disease of the skin. The person was treated shamefully. They were excluded from ordinary society and even forced to wear bells around their necks in order to warn others of their presence. The leprous person was counted among the lowest of marginalized society during the time of Jesus. From a religious perspective, the person with leprosy could never attend the temple. It was believed that because of their sinfulness, their disease was a curse from God. The leper was impure, contaminated, and repulsive to others. Because of their disease, the leper was seen as unclean, thus making them unworthy of being in the presence of Almighty God. The first reading from the book of Leviticus goes so far as to explain how people with leprosy were to be handled. Once the questionable illness of the skin was detected, the person was brought to the priest who deemed them unclean. And when that happened, they were isolated from the community. If that wasn't bad enough, the person had to cry out, unclean, unclean, when someone approached to warn them off. The Gospel shows us how Jesus was moved with pity when the leper came to him. But scripture scholars say that the more accurate emotion was anger. Jesus saw that something was wrong. He was fiercely affected by the suffering before him. Jesus saw a human need, and he responded with concern for the man. Jesus' response to the leper is significant because the ordinary person would have never considered responding to such a request. Jesus, however, heard the man's plea 
and his response came from his heart. Jesus saw in the leper a person rather than a disease. As we reflect upon sacred scripture, we should always ask ourselves, how does it apply to our Christian lives? What are we challenged to examine as we strive to live worthily before the Lord? How does today's gospel lesson invite us to grow in holiness? When I was in the seminary, I spent a summer working with the homeless in Phoenix, Arizona. Each day we would care for men, women, and all too often children who were isolated from the community because of their state in life. They come to us each day seeking out a meal to feed their hungry stomachs. They'd avail themselves to a free shower where they were able to wash up and feel a little more respectable. They came for clothes, and often for someone who would just listen to their story and treat them with respect as a person. In that summer, I met brothers and sisters in Christ who were treated poorly, made to suffer because of a lack of compassion, and even seen by others as being unworthy because of their homelessness. I spent that summer being reminded of what it means to be a Christian. I spent that summer learning how to be concerned for another. I spent that summer being called by so many persons to respond to them in love. The leper, in being asked to be made clean, was asking Jesus to care for him. He wanted to be recognized to matter. Jesus heard that cry and knew that the leper's desire to be clean went beyond his physical malady. Jesus' concern for this man gave him the courage to break society's taboos regarding leprosy. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Jesus' touch pulled the leper out of isolation. Jesus' touch gave the man dignity. Jesus' touch showed love, compassion, and concern. These past five weeks of ordinary time have presented to us for our collective reflection gospel passages about discipleship. We've heard about the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, and we've learned from him what it means to live the good news. Our charge each week has been to reflect on how we live as Jesus' disciples in the world. We've been invited to consider how, by virtue of the witness of our lives, we are spreading the good news. Discipleship is following the great teacher, Jesus Christ. And from that relationship, living in such a way that our actions are rooted in love. To be a true disciple involves proclaiming with our lives the good news. It's imitating Christ through lives marked by charity, concern, and fraternal love. St. Paul, in our second reading, is preaching to the Corinthians and instructing them on how to be disciples. He reminds them that every moment and every action of their lives should testify to the relationship that they have with God. Paul says that what he does as a disciple of Christ is meant to bring others to God, and his entire life is about imitating Christ. Their life and their mission must be the same. St. Paul makes it clear to the early Christians 
that all they do is for God. It's the same for us, baptized Christians. Our lives need to always convey to others what we profess and how that belief moves us to action. Our response to others must be done in such a way that we glorify God. Now the challenge. The response of Jesus to the leper should move us to examine our hearts, minds, and souls to see if our response would match that of the great teacher. When we hear the gospel, I think it's safe to say we believe that we would react as good disciples. We know that the appropriate response to the leper's request is to do as Jesus did. We see ourselves as reaching out, touching, and healing the man. We are certain that we would be people of concern who meet the leper's need with love and charity. However, the lived reality is often quite different. On our Christian journey, we are constantly meeting modern-day lepers. We encounter our brothers and sisters in Christ who are treated shamefully, excluded by others, and ignored for one reason or another. They call out to us, asking for our concern. They look to us, hoping that like Jesus, we will respond to them in love. They remind us of who we are called to be as the followers of Jesus and how we are to live. What we are called to each day as the followers of Jesus Christ is to grow in holiness. That's not an easy task. We grow in holiness when we are able to get out of ourselves and truly see God in others. We grow in holiness when we are not afraid to put our faith into action, even when it may be a challenge. We grow in holiness when we respond to God's love by lives that are constantly informed by it. As we continue our celebration of the Eucharist, let us pray for the continual gift of the love and compassion of Christ that will allow us to be brothers and sisters who reach out to one another in a way that communicates love, compassion, and concern. <laughs>